Hello good friends, I'm glad you can join us today. In this exercise you can learn how to build drag and drop applications with HTML5 and JavaScript. We will also teach you how to read the drop zone that way you can pass the data in the drop zone to your server side or database for saving. That way you can record what people put in the drop zone. There are many types of applications where drag and drop features would make things more user friendly. You're only limited by your imagination. And at the end of the exercise, we will discuss which environments you can expect this to work in and test it in Chrome, Firefox, and Internet Explorer. And I'll also offer some extra tips, so be sure to stick around to the end of the video. Before we get started, let's take a look at the finished product of what we'll be creating today. So you can see we have three objects that can be dragged, and then we also have a drop zone, which is this gray box. So let's take object 2 and drag it into the drop zone and I put an app status let me let that go you can see I have app status up here just for developer purposes so let's grab object 2 and put it in the drop zone so it removes it from where it resides originally and puts it into the drop zone now let's take object 1 then object 3 and then we can get object data object 2 is in the drop zone Object 1 is in the drop zone, and Object 3 is in the drop zone. So it reads the data in the order that it's dropped into the drop zone. That way when the user is finished dropping things into the drop zone, you can record what they put into the drop zone and the order that they put it in, in your database. Or email it to yourself or whatever you need to do on the server side. Okay, you can get yourself a test.html file ready, and I'm going to be offering all of the code for the finished product at my site and I'll put a link for it in the description of this video that way you can reference my code just in case you have any syntax errors with yours or if something seems to not be working and the first thing we'll do is put in place the HTML elements that we'll need and I'll explain them very quickly but everything's pretty simple we have a heading here which is for the app status which isn't very necessary in your completed application this is just going to be here for developer purposes that way it shows exactly what's going on throughout the operations now this heading is just to give the drop zone a title above it then we have a div with an ID of drop zone and that was that gray box where people are going to drop their objects into and we're using the on drag enter event the on drop event the on drag over event and the on drag leave event. So in the on drag enter event, we're going to run a function called drag enter. And we're going to pass the event as an argument. Then for the on drop event, we're going to run a function called drag drop. Then on drag over, we just set return false. That way nothing happens. Then on drag leave, we're going to run a function called drag leave. Then all we have are the three objects that the user can drag into the drop zone. They each have an ID of object one, object two, and object three. And at the end of the video, I'm going to discuss how you can add a lot more information through data attributes. You can use custom data attributes to pass a whole lot of information when it comes time to read what's in the drop zone. But I'll discuss that at the end of the video. I'll give you some tips. Then for each object, we have the class of objects set. That way we can just style them easily, all as a group. Then we set the draggable attribute to true. That way they can be dragged. Then the events are going to be on drag start, on drag end. And in the on drag start for each object, we run the drag start function. And the drag end event, we run the drag end function. It's pretty simple. Then I have a horizontal line here just to separate this button from those objects. And this button has an on click event. And when it's clicked, we're going to run a function called read drop zone. And then I just labeled it get object data because this is the function that's going to allow us to see how many objects have been dropped into the drop zone, read all of those objects, and pass them as a list anywhere we need to for saving or sending or whatever. And that's it for the HTML. Now we're going to put in a couple of CSS rules. One's going to be for the drop zone, and the other rule is going to be for this class objects. Let's put that in the style tag. So we have class objects, and this is what styles all of those objects as a group. Then we have a rule that affects the ID of drop zone, which is this div here. Then we apply these simple properties to style it. Okay, now we're going to move on to the JavaScript portion. And none of this code has to reside in your document. 
you can put it in an external .js file, but I'm just going to have it directly in the document just to keep things simple for the tutorial. You can also externalize your CSS into a .css file. And also, if you would like, all of these events, drag start, drag end, drag over, all of these events can be applied to these elements when the document loads. For instance, in a window.load event, you can add all of these events through JavaScript. That way you can clean up your HTML a little bit more, if you would like. But it doesn't hurt to have the events directly on the elements as attributes. But if you want to clean things up, you can certainly add these events to these objects using JavaScript when the page loads. Okay, now we'll start with the JavaScript. First thing we're going to have is a function with a name of underscore and every everywhere we use that it's just simply to return the get element by ID reference. So that way we have an object reference for the elements without having to write document dot get element by ID blah blah blah. And all we have to do is put an underscore to get the object reference. That's all that's there for. The next thing we're going to do is put a variable in place just to initialize it as false. And the variable's name is dropped in. And we're going to toggle that from false to true and back to false whenever we need to within the script. Now the first function that we're going to put in place is going to be for this drag start event on all of these objects. You see we run the drag start function. So let's drop that function into place. So when each object is picked up by the user and they start to drag it, we're going to put into the app status element, affect its inner HTML, and we're going to write dragging the event.target.get attribute ID. So we're just going to grab the ID attribute of the object. That way we know exactly which one they're dragging. So event.target is the object reference for the element that's being dragged. And you can simply get any attributes from that element that you want. Then we're going to set the drop effect. And there's different options you can use for the drop effect property. But I'll give you information about all of that at the end of the video. And I'll show you where you can do more research into all of the uh, data transfer objects, properties, and methods. Then the next line, we're running the set data method for the data transfer object. And the first parameter we pass is text, because we're just going to be setting some text data for the data transfer object. That way it can be read in other events. And the text that we're going to be setting is event.target.getAttribute ID, which is the ID of the element being dragged. And you can set any data that you want. You don't have to set just the ID as text. You can set any data as text. Now the next function we're going to put in place is drag enter. And that's for the drop zone. As you can see the drag enter event here fires off a function called drag enter. So we have to have that in place. Let's put it in right now. Function drag enter. We snatch up the event as an argument. And then we simply put in the app status dot inner HTML. You are dragging over the event dot target dot get attribute ID, which will basically say you're dragging over the drop zone. And you really don't have to relate that information to your users, but I just put that in place for developer purposes. Now the next function is drag leave. And drag leave is also for the drop zone. So when someone takes an object, drags it out of the drop zone and they haven't dropped it yet, you can know when they have left the drop zone with that object. Then we just write in the app status, you left the drop zone, which is also another feature that you don't have to have in place for your completed application. You really don't have to relate that to the user because they know that they left the drop zone and they didn't drop the object. Now we're going to put the drag drop function in place, which is definitely more important. Now drag drop is also for the event of drop on the drop zone. So whenever the user drops one of the objects into the drop zone, this drag drop function is going to fire off. Now the first thing we do in this function is we're going to write event.prevent default. So we run the prevent default method on the event just to prevent undesirable default behavior while dropping. Because I noticed in some browsers, you get weird behavior if you don't run this prevent default method. That way we can just customize what we want to happen a little better. And the next thing we do is we get the element ID. So here we run the get data method. And remember up here in the drag start, we use the set data method to set that data. 
Now what happens is the get data method can retrieve any data that you have set and we're going to retrieve that text. So basically that gives us the element ID that's being dropped into the drop zone. Then the next line we say event.target which is basically saying the drop zone object. And then we're going to append child that way we add the element to it by its ID. That way the element leaves where it is originally and then lives in the drop zone now. Then in the next line, we're just writing into the app status, dropped, then we write the element ID into the drop zone. In the very next line, we target the element being dropped, and then we remove its attribute of draggable. That way it's not draggable any longer. It's in place in the drop zone, and the user can't drag it back out. Then the next line, we change the style.cursor back to default for that object, because you can see here, we put the cursor as move for all of those objects. And we just want to set it back to a default style cursor, which is the pointer, the little arrow. That way they don't get confused about whether or not it's still draggable. And then we simply change the dropped in variable to true. Because we're going to make an evaluation on that dropped in variable in the very next function that we put into place. And this is the last function that's going to be for the ba basic drag and drop operations. Then we'll just need one more function to read all of the object data that's all in the, all of the objects that are in the drop zone. We can count how many objects are in. We can pass all of the object data to server side and do whatever we want. So the drag end function that we just put into place is triggered on all of the objects when the drag end event triggers. So we just run the drag end function basically when the user lets go. Now we run an if condition within this function to see if dropped in variable is equal to false. And if it's not dropped within the drop zone, then we're going to write into the app status, you let the object, whatever its ID is, go. That means they dropped it, but not within the drop zone. And then no matter what that condition reads, we're going to just change dropped in to false again for the next item or for the next object being dragged. And that's it. That's all of the basic operations for a drag and drop application. Okay, now the very last thing we need to wrap up this tutorial's code is the read drop zone function. And this one's important if you want to access all of the objects as a list. All the objects that the user has dropped into the drop zone and they'll be in the order that the user has dropped them in the drop zone. So under the drag end function, I'm going to put in place the read drop zone function. And all I'm doing here is running a for loop that iterates over the length of how many children are in the drop zone. So that gives you a count of how many objects or items that the user has dropped into the drop zone. Because drop zone dot children returns an array and you can just read the length of that array and then run this for loop to process each one independently. So all I'm doing here is setting an alert that puts the ID of the object passing through the loop and then we write some text that says is in the drop zone. So it'll say object 3 is in the drop zone, object 1 is in the drop zone, and object 2 is in the drop zone if they happen to drop all three. Now within this loop you can make a list maybe a comma separated list or hyphen separated whatever kind of delimiter that you want to put in between each bit of information and you can build that list and then after the for loop you can run Ajax request to pass any data to your server so you can make a JSON object or just a regular string a long string that's a list listing all of those items or whatever you want to do to it. Okay, now that all of the code for the tutorial is in place, I'm going to offer you guys a few tips and a little bit more insight into things that might help you along when you're building drag and drop applications. Now let's go up here to the CSS and let's say these objects were not display inline block, but let's say they were block display. You'll get totally different behavior of how they stack. See, now they're block display. If I take object 2 and put it in the drop zone, 
then object 3, they stack as block level elements. When I had that as inline block, they can just stack horizontally. Now what if I remove this and let me show you some different behavior if I put the position to absolute. Now they're all going to stack directly on top of one another. You see you have object 1, 2, and 3 are stacked on top of one another. So let me take off the top one and put it in the drop zone. See, then object 2 is top of the stack. Then I take object 2 and put it in the drop zone. And it stacks on top of object 3 in the drop zone. Then if I take object 1 and put it in the drop zone. So it would be like taking a deck of cards and reversing it. So my point is that your CSS can dictate how things are stacked in the drop zone. Let me put this back on display inline block. There. Now here's another very important tip. If you want to pass more data, for instance, with these objects, you can give these objects more data attributes, custom data attributes, to pass any information that you want to these JavaScript functions. If you go to developphp.com and you type in the search bar data attributes and then search, you'll see the custom data attributes JavaScript tutorial. And that's in the JavaScript general programming section. So if I just click JavaScript and go to video tutorials, then I go to general, where is that? General, or you can just use the search feature and it'll take you right there. But general, we have custom data attributes. Where is that? Right there. This tutorial shows you how to add custom data attributes to those objects that can be read in all of those JavaScript functions. So if you want to follow this tutorial, it'll give you good insight into how to do that. And I'll also, I'll put a link to this tutorial within the description of our uh, drag and drop tutorial here. Okay, now the very last thing we have to discuss is which environments that you can expect this to work in. So let's go ahead and file preview in Internet Explorer. Let me drag this over here and then object 2, object 1, object 3, and then we can get object data. Object 2 is in the drop zone, object 1 is in the drop zone, and object 3 is in the drop zone. So it works fine in Internet Explorer. File, preview in browser Firefox. Drag this over here. And let's go ahead and put 2, 3, and 1. And we can still get our object data, no problem. And when we built, I've been testing in Chrome the whole time we've been building, so I know for sure that it works in Chrome browser. Now, I know some of you are going to ask, so let me go ahead and cover it right now. Support for this technology on mobile touchscreen environments is almost non-existent. But using touch events, a developer can replicate this functionality on touch devices with a little bit of work. So touch event programming could replicate the application on mobile devices and touch screens. So if you don't know about the touch events yet, all you have to do is type into a search engine, JavaScript touch events. And you can learn all about it and that will allow you to replicate this sort of drag and drop behavior on touch screens and mobile devices. Okay, I think I've covered all of the bases that will allow you to get a good start, a good beginning into drag and drop application development. And if this is something that you guys are really interested in and you think it's really cool, we can go deeper to show you more specific features that you might have in mind. And if you can just put a comment into the comment area saying, how would I accomplish this specific tasks in my drag and drop application development? And myself or somebody else that reads your comment could provide you with a very helpful answer. Or I may even do more tutorials. I might even just put a drag and drop section at developphp.com uh, here in the JavaScript video tutorials. I might have a new section just special for drag and drop application development. That's if you guys want to know more or take it into different directions or whatever, but this uh, tutorial here should give you a really good start into whatever you want to do drag and drop wise. Alright, I appreciate you tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!